How's it going, Gray Boys? It is the end of conference championship week, and we destroyed Nebraska 28 to 3. It was a close game through the first quarter, uh, you know, 0 0, but uh, just as the game went on, it got worse and worse for the Corn Huskers. Only a field goal allowed in that third quarter, so feeling pretty confident there. The question is going to be, can we continue that momentum into the playoffs? Obviously, we've won our conference championship game, so we are granted an auto bid, but sitting at the number one uh, spot in the country, that was guaranteed as well. And what we're going to do is advance the week into the bowl season to see who's joining us and to see who it is that we could be playing on the other side of the bracket, who it is that we think maybe will make it to the championship game. Uh, I'm, I want to say against us, but there's no guarantee that we make it either. Oh, RJ Rivera gets snubbed at the last second for the Heisman, and it's not even close. We thought that it was his for a while. He's been leading the race, but uh, uh, Casey Nelson, the Louisiana Tech senior redshirt quarterback, blew everybody away. 554 first place votes. RJ had 85. This guy dominated almost or more than twice as many total points or total vote votes for that Heisman Trophy. So he goes 278 to 388 through the air for over 3,100 yards, almost 32. 173 carries for 774 yards and 37 total touchdowns. It's kind of a shame. I thought RJ was going to get there. I thought we had a chance maybe in a four-year, four-Heisman, once-in-a-lifetime player, but it's not the case for our 79 overall freshman running back. Bit of a shame that we don't win it, but, you know, runner-up for the Heisman in your freshman season certainly is not a bad thing to have happen for you. How about the rest of the awards? George Smith is going to win half a million of them. He wins the Bednarik. He wins the Nagurski. He wins the Lombardi. Uh, Whitaker wins the Jim Thorpe. Rivera wins the Jet Rogers returning award. And we have won AP Coach of the Year. So a lot of XP coming our way after that one. Certainly going to be enough to level us up. And currently we're slated for the number two Texas. But that just means that the Longhorns are going to be the high seed on the other side of the bracket. So let's just real quick take a look at some scores and schedules and see who it is that uh, won their conference championship games. We won the Big Ten. Uh, Rutgers wins the MAC. Western Kentucky wins Conference USA. Georgia beats Auburn. So Auburn just continues to fall. They lost three games in a row at the end of the season uh, after an incredibly strong start. But it's the Bulldogs earning their way into the 18 playoff. Fresno State wallops on Boise State 36-14. Georgia Tech beats Syracuse to win the ACC, so uh, the Yellow Jackets are going to make the playoff. And USC uh, beats a pretty highly ranked Stanford. The Cardinal were 11-1, and but just can't get it done against the 11-2 and USC. So that was a battle that we saw going on throughout the season there in the Pac-12, and it's the Trojans that come out on top. Let's take a look at all Americans before we load up our and generate our playoff. Uh, do we have anybody first team? You got to think RJ Rivera at least for the return man. My goodness. Okay, that is a lot of All-Americans. We are the number one team in the country, but I did not expect this many. George Smith, Clinton Whitfield, Austin Sims on the defensive line all making it there. Uh, middle linebacker, it's Leon Logan. Devin Royo, our free safety. Same with our strong safety, Chris Whitaker. He did win an award, so that makes sense. Uh, no RJ Rivera. That seems like an oversight to me. He's got to be second team. You would, I mean, I don't believe that. I think that that is incredibly disrespectful. Uh, he's won multiple awards, or he's won, I guess he just won the Jet, but uh, he's an award-winning return man, and he's not even the first-team returner. Second-team running back, though. Anybody else in the second team? I expect it to be a little bit less, and we should see him in the freshman All-America list, so he is the freshman running back. Chris Rutger up there as well. He's had a great season. 80 overall, he could be poised for... A big offseason if he can just boost up his rankings a little bit. See if he stays focused. Then we got Napoleon Sandcastle at strong safety. Mike Thompson, our punter, is also a freshman All-American. What if we take a look at the All-Big Ten? That's going to be a lot of yellow names here. Maurice State, RJ Rivera, Chris Rutger for the offense. On the defense, it's Jason Fry, George Smith, Avery Rawls, Clinton Whitfield, Austin Sims, Leon Logan, Mike Moore, Devin Royal, Chris Whitaker, Oh my gosh, Mike Thompson. That's uh, that's quite a bit. And on the second team, uh, just Napoleon Sandcastle. But <laughs> the amount of XP, that and all the awards, I mean, we are only 5,000 away from another level up. So that will head us off in a good direction for next season. 
Well, let's go ahead and load up the utility tool and get this playoff generated. Last season, things maybe got a little bit wonky, but hopefully uh, my made enough backups this year that it won't be a problem. I'm curious to see who they have making it in. We aren't going to edit anything uh, to change any of the selected teams, so we'll just see what we can do. We'll load it in, and again, uh, all the Power 5 teams get an auto bid, and then the highest ranked G5 team and two at-large bids. Uh, so let's see. We're going to be number one. We'll see who makes it to number eight for our first playoff matchup. So we can load it in and uh, interesting. We play the eight seed USC at 11 and two. The Trojans a very good team down below us on the other side of the bracket. It's Georgia Tech and Cincinnati. So the Bearcats either get their at large bid or no, they're the highest ranked G5 team. So they will play against the Yellow Jackets in the Orange Bowl. Uh, ours is going to be a nice traditional Rose Bowl game. So uh, Big Ten, Pac-12, that'll be fun. Hopefully USC doesn't take a little bit of home field advantage being from LA. Uh, on the other side of the bracket, number two Texas plays against number seven Georgia in what could be a bloodbath for either team in the Sugar Bowl. 11 and one versus 10 and three and the Bulldogs are charging after winning the SEC championship. Uh, and then in the Cotton Bowl, it's Clemson and Tennessee. So Clemson gets an at-large bid because I believe Georgia Tech won the uh, conference and then Tennessee also getting an at-large. So at-large versus at-large at the three and six spot. Uh, I am expecting Clemson to win that one, but you never know. Tennessee could shock us. So we can go ahead and lock that one in. Uh, we're not going to change any bowl games. I'm curious if there's anything interesting. Coastal Carolina. Uh, they're playing against an unranked Penn State in the Music City Bowl. I can't read that. I think that says Music City Bowl. I'm curious to see how some of these teams do. We obviously, I mean, Coastal at number 13, it kind of seems like they've been screwed over playing an unranked Penn State. But that's the way that it gets drawn sometimes. And Coastal is playing in a pretty strong SEC. So we can go ahead and just save that up and let's get on to this first match of the playoffs. So here we are in our quarterfinal rounds against USC. We don't have any sort of preview, so we'll just jump straight into it. USC is a 93 overall with a 93 offense and a 93 defense compared to our 79s. Uh, that has me a little bit worried. We have not had to play a lot of really good skilled teams uh this season so this could def definitely get interesting we're gonna go with the silver helmet today and usc i don't know uh i think usc being usc we just got to keep them in their standard away uniforms now coming into this full disclosure uh the past like nine videos you've seen were all pre-recorded about two weeks ago so i have not played anything in at least two weeks i might be a little bit rusty i might make some bad decisions early in this game but we kind of have that as like a almost a real life simulation of the uh, the off time, the off period that you have between uh, your conference championship game and your bowl game. Uh, rankings wise, USC has a pretty decent offense. They're passing the ball really well. They're not running it quite as good. Uh, and they've got a pretty mediocre defense. Again, we have the best defense in the country and a pretty solid offense. Uh, we're not stopping the pass quite as well as we're stopping the run, though. So that could definitely be the matchup to look at their pass offense against our pass defense. These top players again are for next year, I believe. So Maurice State at 89 overall, dropping down to Jeff Fontenot at 84 and Jody Gentry at an 83. Their top players should be higher than that. An 80 overall quarterback Wheeler, just a little bit better than Maurice State. Evans and Wilson is injured that that running back so that could be big as a big injury oh they have a lot season ending injuries for two running backs and a corner broken ankle broken wrist torn rotator cuff that is certainly not going to help out the Trojans but it is going to help us potentially make a push into that semi-final well you are looking live at the granddaddy of them all the Rose Bowl New Year's Day what can we do here it would be pretty disappointing to end the season here, losing as the number one seed, but you never know. We're going to start with the football. I want to get in the groove of things on offense, start to get more East Tate warmed up early, and we'll send returner of the year, RJ Rivera, back deep to return this kickoff. This is a terrible kick. Very short. RJ easily able to field it. Can he do anything with it? He's got the outside edge. RJ Rivera off to the races, cutting it back inside, stays on his feet. Nobody's going to catch him, and RJ Rivera is going to take the opening kickoff of the Rose Bowl back. Back for a touchdown, no flags on the field. And just like that, we're not gonna get the chance to get Maurice State warmed up because the defense will have to get out here immediately. Did he do the exact same thing to start the conference championship game? 
I don't know why. I feel like that's the case. 7-0 Eastern Michigan very early on in this one. Man, that kicker had the winds at his back, pushing the ball downfield for him, and he couldn't get it to the end zone. For us, we're not going to do it because we don't have a good kicker, and the wind was coming at us. And it's a good return for the Trojans. London having to pull him down, but they got out, what, past the 35? I am incredibly curious to see what this defense can do today, knowing that these guys are going to want to pass the football, and they've got a couple of injured running backs. Quarterback gets sacked on the first attempt. Jamal Wheeler just doesn't see it coming. It's a loss of eight. Austin Sims, the man getting through on that one. Coverage was tight. I feel like maybe he had a guy open at one point, but just couldn't find it in time. And now it's second and 18. They will have to step back looking to throw. And it's almost intercepted and then almost caught. Oh, that should have been a turnover. Well, this third and 18, we'll see what we can do. Coming out in this cover six, expecting again for them to pass the football. We're just going to try to defend stuff in Whitaker. Tried to give it up. He tried to ruin that one. Thankfully, gets the stop and makes it fourth and two. It is the pump formation out on the field for USC, but man, gave up 16 yards on that play. That's a little bit disappointing, if I'm being honest. We'll see if this is a returnable punt, and it very much looks like it. So, if we can get some blocks, RJ Rivera making a couple of guys miss, and RJ Rivera picking up blocks down the sideline. He goes, just gets tackled across the 25. Oh, man, he wanted to win the Heisman. He's showing why he maybe deserved it. So starting our second drive from the 23 and a half yard line, we're going to give it to RJ out towards the edge on a run, waiting for the blocking. It's not coming, but a spin move gets RJ forward for seven more yards. This guy is only a freshman. There's a chance that we could have him for another four or another three seasons. That's insane to me. Jeff Fontenot, how about a little wide receiver mid-screen? Just, uh... Well, we lose three yards, but it's a completion. You guys got to remember, Maurice, not great at passing the ball early in the game. So if we can get him completing the ball, that would be good. Just would like to go forward instead of backwards. All right, well, how about this one? I don't think it's going to work, but we're going to go with the swing screen on third and six. Completed. He's got some blocking. Stone, first down, and then some. Inside the 15, down to the 11. Great eight-yard catch and a first down. USC the home favorites here for sure, but uh, we're getting it done early. And Maurice State keeping it on our little read option. The Juke, ooh, making a guy fall out of his shoes there. He gets seven yards. And we probably don't want him to take too many weird shots as his neck just kind of broke there. Tell me that this is a natural movement for the neck here for Maurice State. He's a goddamn owl. <laughs> That's one of the more bizarre neck movements I've ever seen in my life. He should be alive right now, and we are going to run this football. It wasn't called counter. We're going to try to back the safeties off and just hand it off up the middle. RJ Rivera fighting through the contact of the linebacker for his second touchdown of this first quarter, and we're only halfway through this first quarter. 14-0. Looking good so far. Is this going to end up being a blowout? I really thought the USC was going to play us super hard, but... Uh, the way it's looking right now, it's not good news for the Trojans as Napoleon pops up Justin Mitchell. He only gets 20 yards on the return. I gotta be curious here if they decide to run the football at all. If they're gonna be feeling the pressure early in this one. First and 10, they will step back looking to throw. We're covering it pretty well and we're there for the user pick with London. That's something you'll never see from me. That was the worst decision to throw I've ever seen. He threw it straight to us and Bryant London holds on to it. That might be user pick number one of this entire series. And <laughs> things just went from bad to worse for USC right there. It is just looking terrible <laughs> for these guys. RJ Rivera on a little counter. Eh, that's not going anywhere. Bad user for me. Just kind of ran him into the defense. So it will be a stop of a loss of one. Can't help but feel like this one's going to be up to USC's defense to turn it around. And it's going to have to start right here as we're going triple option. And that's a late pitch. They covered it really well. RJ broke the first tackle, but he's got two other Trojans in the area. A loss of five. Third and a mile now. As far as I'm concerned, Maurice is certainly not ready to pass this football. So it's uh, Bentley in on this one. We're going to try a slip screen. This is four down territory. Waiting, waiting. He's got a little bit of a block, but he's just too slow. So Derek gets two yards out of that play. Felt like he ran a whole lot more than that, though. And 3-3, three three, Maurice State is going to have to be accurate here. 
because we're going for it on fourth and 13. Going for the dagger. A field goal isn't good enough in my eyes. Why could be open. Chris Rutger. The ball's under him. Caught. And he's just stopped short of the goal line. Down at the two. But a beautiful pass kind of lobbed up there from Maurice Tate. Gets us that first and goal. Chris Rutger again. Another freshman on this team. And RJ's coming back in. He's looking for touchdown number three on the day in this first quarter. And he's not going to get it. Got a yard, but that's it. Part of me says just keep running it to RJ, but we're going to give Robertson a chance and give it the fullback dive, and he's going to shed a tackle into the end zone. So Jeremy Robertson gives us that third touchdown of this first quarter. I mean, I don't know, USC, LA traffic. Trojans fans might want to start heading out early. I know that it's New Year's Day pretty early still, but uh, you got to imagine traffic on the 210 is pretty bad. No matter what for these guys as another decent return for the Trojans, but they haven't been able to do anything with the little bit of momentum they've gotten off of their kick returns. Four plays for eight total yards for USC as uh, they haven't picked up a first down. They haven't even sniffed a first down. This could be positive yards. Logan can't get off the block and it's a huge slip screen. Another broken tackle. That's bad for me. We should have been there for the user swatter tackle. They just about tripled the yards that they had, though, as they're going to go hurry up on this drive. Trying to change some stuff up. I do like that. But will they be able to do anything with it? No. Pass thrown out of bounds. Jamal, we are 2 of 5 through the air so far today. Well, this is risky. Uh, I'm tempted to bring the blitz. We're not going to. Keep sitting in this man coverage. It's been working well so far. And the quarterback almost hit as he's thrown. Throws up a dangerous pass. And Chris Whitaker with the interception stays on his feet. Oh, Almost had a chance at a great return, but two interceptions already in the first quarter. The defense is on one right now. These guys are going to get run out of the stadium before halftime. Maurice Tate keeping it on a read option. Staying on his feet and will slide down. Oh my gosh, making guys miss left and right and then avoiding the hit. He gets eight yards. 15 seconds left in this first quarter. We're going to see if he can pass accurately again here. A little play action waiting over the middle. A risky throw, but Stone holds onto it through the big hit from the linebacker. Well, let's get one final playoff in this first quarter. We'll go with a run. RJ Rivera towards the edge, needing the blocking. And oh my gosh, that looked like it hurt. Unfortunately, that is going to be the end of our first quarter. 21 to nothing. Uh, I mean, this one's... Dare I say it? Just about over? If we score a touchdown on this drive, what can they do? Maurice Tate feeling a little bit hot at this point. We'll see what he can do. Continuing to look to pass the football. X was open. Late throw at it, but Jody Gentry comes down with it. Gets eight yards out of the play. I have been really tempted to try and let Maurice throw one deep, but I just don't know if he's quite ready for it yet, as we do have a running situation on this third and four. Four down territory. The blocking holds for RJ Rivera, and on the counter, he's able to get around the defensive end and pick up a first down. And uh, this might not work, but we're going to go with a little swing screen to RJ Rivera. If he gets the blocking, you never know. He's got all that speed just run into the edge. Positive yards out of almost every play so far. How about a little play action? This time, looking deep, willing to throw it. If A can come open, Chris Rutger comes down with it again. These guys are holding on to everything for us. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe this gets to the point where I can try my patented flea flicker. Well, that probably wouldn't work. How about a jet sweep? Could that work? We've got blockers out in front. Stone trying to get to the corner very successfully. That's a first down. Maybe I need to take a two-week break more often because we are coming out firing on all cylinders. Over 100 yards of offense for us, and they have, like, 20? Maybe less than that? A's open over the middle. We'll give it to Brian Curtis, no problem. I mean, knock on wood, but Maurice Tate is 9 of 9 through the air. Hasn't been able to find the end zone. No super deep passes yet, but he hasn't needed to because the rest of the team is stepping up and picking up those yards for him. Just like that, it's a first and goal for us. Seven first downs on the day. Derek Bentley coming in. We're going to give him the run up the middle. Looks like there's a linebacker to stop him, but the block gets picked up. Linebacker was just too hesitant. He, he didn't want to plug the gap early. Gave time for the lineman to get there. Uh, that's an easy touchdown for Derek Bentley. So that makes it 28 nothing. And let's quickly pause it so that I can prove to you guys that we are still using Seagator 22 sliders. Um... There's no reason that we should be dominating the way we are other than just the players that we have on the team making an impact when it matters. Uh, and boy, 
is it being felt all over the place. So we can just kick another one away. Hopefully this one gets towards the end zone with that tailwind now. And yeah, they'll field it at the goal line. London streaking down the field. Massive hit. Oh my goodness. I've made this joke plenty of times before, but uh, 404 left in the half and USC's offense has not been found yet. They're stepping back and that one is, <laughs> well, they had a guy kind of open over the middle, but Wheeler is rattled and he missed him. Let's get crazy. We're going to rush five on this one. We haven't done a whole lot of uh, blitzing so far in this game. Pressure doesn't get there. He does get the completion off, but it is a third and four. And uh, this would be an interesting time for them to decide to run the football. I don't know if we'll see it. Maybe a counter on third and four. No, stepping back to throw. Quarterback throws over the middle. He's got a guy open and they convert near midfield. And we'll see if we can get the pressure in place on time on this one. This is really risky. I just pressed up while bringing a safety blitz. Thankfully, nobody gets burned and they just get two yards out of the play. USC sitting in this... Uh, Hurry up is doing a decent job, and they're going to go back to the slip screen that has been their best play so far today. We miss a tackle, and they're off to the races across midfield, across the 30, down to the 28-yard line. As uh, the person controlling the user there, uh, definitely a little bit frustrating as they're going to go back to it. London, oh, I tried to go for the pick, and this could be a touchdown for the Trojans. Back-to-back -back halfback slip screens. I didn't expect that whatsoever. And then I got too greedy. I went for the, the pick six. And we aren't able to get the tackle. Trojans on the board, 28 to 7. Well, let's just get a return in, huh? Uh, RJ Rivera took the opening one back for a touchdown. He's got some really good blocking on this one, but not quite good enough. Still gets out to about the 39. Man, I thought we had a chance to uh, shut these guys out. But, you know, still up three touchdowns. We're not going to complain. A little triple option to start off this drive and not going to make the pitch until late. We didn't quite get the pick up and Jason Stone again getting hit really hard in this game. One thing's certain, that one looked like it hurt quite a bit. Second and five, stepping back on a little play action pass. They're not really bringing a whole lot of pressure, but it's enough for me to feel uncomfortable. B ran out of bounds, so we can't throw to him and we'll just have Maurice State scramble for 10 yards. They're not committing to stopping the scramble just yet, so we'll utilize it here and there, make sure that they know that it's a threat, and we'll give it to Bentley, who's going to go forward. I don't know how he got three yards out of that play, but we'll take it. RJ coming back in. This could be a big one. The counter if the blocking is right. Oh, my gosh. The, I got to say, their run defense has been pretty solid. That one drops us back to a third and 11 and forces a passing situation under two minutes left in the half. We are not out of this yet. Stepping back, waiting for it. Chris Rutger, wide open, catches it on the run, and that's going to be six. Oh, 47 yards into the end zone. Nothing they could do there. The separation on that route was phenomenal. 10 to 10 through the air for Maurice Tate, and we've increased our lead back up to 28, 35 to 7 with a minute and 40 left in the first half. This is... Uh, uh, this is a, just a beatdown on offense. When our team has the football, it has not gone well for the Trojans. Heck, even when they've had the football, it has really not gone well for them. So weirdness all over the place. We're going to expect a lot of passing on this drive. Uh, minute 36, they're definitely going to be looking to have something good happen. And quarterback takes off running for the first time. Good for five yards. I'm just happy that he slid down and didn't try to juke me out because uh, that's where we give up like 30 yard plays is when I'm forced to make an open field tackle. Again, they step back to pass and this one, oh, that could have been picked off. Thankfully out of bounds and complete. Third and five for the Trojans. We're going to use George Smith. There's a reason he won so many awards. Oh, he got pressure on the quarterback. Oh, Napoleon stopped it. Fourth and two, Sandcastle gets there. So we're able to take a timeout and force the punt team out onto the field. A minute and 13, we can make this a 35-point lead heading into the locker rooms. If things go well, a very returnable punt. We wanted it to the left, and they gave it to us to the left. RJ Rivera gets us to about midfield. Well, we're going to look deep. Play number one here. See what we can get out of this as... Uh, I don't know, I'm not expecting a whole lot, but if they bring pressure and it kind of looks like they will, we're just going to heave a deep Chris Rucker, maybe a chance. He's not going to come down with that first incompletion on a toss-up 50-50 ball. That one's on me a bit. I started to panic. 
I don't know. I haven't felt like we've had a lot of pressure come at us so far this game, so I didn't like what I was seeing. Although, I do like this. I don't like this. Taking the time out. First two plays of this drive have felt very, very awkward. I don't feel confident here. But, uh, well, it looks like they have elected to bring some pressure. Maybe we can beat them. Let's, uh, let's send some boys deep here and see what we can get out of this one. Jody Gentry, Jeff Fontenot. We're going to see what Jody Gentry can do. 50-50 ball down the sideline. It's incomplete. Fourth and two. I'm really hoping Jeff Fontenot wasn't open because I eyed uh, Jody Gentry the whole way. I didn't even look at Jeff. Fourth and two. Gonna run it. RJ Rivera, he's done everything so far today. He's not going to be able to do enough on this one. Turnover on downs. USC's defense holds. Uh, we got a little bit greedy on two uh, passing plays this drive, and it bites us. This is a huge opportunity for the Trojans to turn this game around. If they can score before the half, they get the ball to start the third quarter. That could change everything, and they're going to open it up with a huge pass over the middle for a 15-yard reception over midfield. So just like that, first and 10, feeling a little bit of pressure here, expecting the passing. Can the uh, coverage hold up well enough? This one could be picked off. Green comes down with it. That's a foot in bounds with obvious space between the toe and the sideline, and it's the third interception of the half from this defense. Went up there, high pointed it, and that's uh, Eastern Michigan football. Guess we just decided we would rather have worse field position in 31 seconds as opposed to better and a minute and 13, because we're going to look for the end zone. RJ open. I don't like that. Didn't get out of bounds. Didn't get the first down. Clock's ticking here, and it's going to tick down real quick. 17 seconds, just looking for some sort of Hail Mary. Anybody coming open? I don't see anything. Going to throw it away. With the exception of, like, one play, these guys have covered us pretty well deep downfield. So we'll see if we can do anything. Again, trying to extend this one. Seven seconds. Just try to get out of bounds with four seconds and we can heave up a Hail Mary towards the end zone. We've gotten these before. Uh, USC's defense coming alive here at the end of the half. It's really just going to be a question of uh, what can we do to stop these guys? I'm going to put Rivera on a wheel route just in case. Maybe he's completely uncovered. Pull somebody away from it. But we're going to heave it deep. This one not going to be thrown far enough. And that's intercepted. No return. Clock hits triple zeros. Maury State struggled at the end of the half. Started the game uh, 11 of 11. 10 of 10. Something like that through the air. We head into the locker rooms 11 of 15. Not a whole lot of completions in the final two minutes. But uh, he's already done enough. 35 to 7. We are definitely feeling comfortable with this lead. USC does get the ball again to start the third quarter, but the way their offense has been playing, we shouldn't be too worried. All we have to do is play our game, maybe even run the clock out a little bit, and we should be walking into the semifinals of this national uh, or of this college football playoff experience. Uh, I mean, gosh, RJ Rivera getting it done. Chris Rutgers done some huge work for us. Maurice Tate's done it. The defense as a whole. We just have to continue what we've seen. And uh, again, I think this is almost in the bag. Give us one more touchdown and I'll be pretty much sure of it. As we kick this one off, not full power, Clark. It's going to be a very returnable ball, but I'd like to ask you guys to hit the like button if you're enjoying this video. And ooh, maybe we can get some sort of stop. 129 yards given up, but three interceptions for the defense. I want to see a repeat of that this half. Starting from about the 27-yard line. What can USC do? Will they actually run the football at all in this game? Doesn't seem likely as they go to Reed over the middle. Sandcastle gets beat. That's a quick first down. We definitely have some issues that can be easily exposed over the middle of the field. Maybe a little cover one robber can fix that. Or if the quarterback wants to run, can we strip the ball? Oh my gosh, he's got some legs and breaking a tackle as big as he gets 13 yards. I don't even know who the coach of USC is at this point, but he must have said something inspiring in the locker rooms because they've come out showing a little bit of aggression here. Quarterback wanting it to win this one makes a bad pass, just gets three yards. This man goes out of bounds, and that'll give us uh, another second and seven here to work with on the day. Again, we haven't seen a run. I thought that was going to be a draw play. This one's going to be wide open. Saw that the whole way at Reed. Easy little corner route for a first down. 
So either we go with the robber underneath or we get two deep safeties. Either way, they're going to be able to exploit it. And on this first down, again, stepping back to throw over the middle. You see it, but the quarterback swallowed up in the backfield. Nowhere for him to go is uh, you got Rawls and I think that might have been Smith in the backfield causing havoc. Both defensive ends getting in there at the exact same time. Certainly that one did not feel good. I'm curious now, are these guys going to go for it on fourth down in this spot? Second and 16, not going to be easy. Well, gosh, they're not going to have to go for it on fourth down. Our coverage is starting to fall apart. Time to switch it up a little bit, I think. We're going to go cover two. Try to see if the zone can slow these guys down as it's first and ten. And they are going to hand the ball off for the first time. A counter goes for five. Marcus Carroll, presumably the third string back, doing well on his first carry. And now inside the 15, the Trojans threatening to score. We'll hope to slow them down. Running back in motion. They step back, looking to throw. Guys open. Oh, passes just blown up. Thought it was completed. Knocked away. Incomplete. Third and five. Guess the question's going to be, what can we do? Carter in. No Smith on this play. Third and five trying to get the pressure. He's wide open. Green can't get there in time. Broken tackle. And it's a first and goal down to the two. Mike Reed now has seven completions. These The, the sole reason this team is still alive in this game. Not sure what exactly we can do to stop it. We are going to bring a lot of pressure, expecting the run. It's a handoff, but a broken tackle into the end zone for Joey Brooks. Maybe the fourth string running back. So it's going to be 35 to 14. Our inability to convert at the end of the half kind of hurting us. So it's just a 21 point lead now. Three touchdowns in our favor. I wouldn't say I'm worried just yet, but if the offense struggles here, I would start to be uh, a little bit concerned. Maurice Tate still feeling pretty hot in this game, but uh, I don't know how confident I am with that. We're going to run a read option. Plenty of space for Maurice. Not the best running, but we get four yards out of it. I'd like to keep the ball on the ground a fair bit here. Uh, we'll just see what the offensive line can do for us. They have a great defensive line, but on the counter, the blocking is fantastic. And it gives us a third and two. I'm going to call this four down territory, to be honest, but uh, we're looking for a little bit more than that. Never mind. Uh, apparently, I called the counter. I thought we were calling a pass. I'm not going to go with the audible. I'm confident with that. Derek Bentley gets the first down. No problem. Uh, I guess the offensive coordinator stepped in and called a smarter play for us. We've now rushed for over 100 yards as a team. And we're going to look to trick them into thinking it's a run. A play action. Stepping back. Y is open. Chris Rucker catching it in stride. He's got a lot of space to work with. Getting a little bit of stiff arm cheese across the 40-yard line. That's exactly what you want to see out of that one. USC now, nine first downs, only 14 points. That's got to hurt the Trojans quite a bit. RJ on the uh, little run out towards the edge gets nine. That was all too easy for him. And on this second down, we'll just give it to Bentley up the middle. Try and let him pound forward for a new set of downs, and he does just that. Four yards nearing the red zone. Trips right for us here as we will go back to the air on first down. Looking, waiting, X is open. It's Jody Gentry over the middle. That's a good catch inside the red zone. Second and four, plenty of space out to the right for RJ Rivera to work with. I'm curious, can we bring Stone in? No. Uh, well, let's hope his blocking is all right on the sweep as we just got to cut it upfield. Uh, maybe if we keep it towards the end, it's a touchdown, but I will take the first down positive yards on the play for Rivera and I got to be worried about throwing a pick but we are starting to or continuing to throw from the 12 yard line looking at it a over the middle it's Rutger <laughs> we just find the space oh that's a risky throw waited just long enough to throw it and he's into the end zone unguarded at 42 to 14 USC is running out of time real quick well let's just boot it away again huh if the defense gets a stop I'll call it but uh I don't know. USC has shown some signs of improvement over the past few drives. I just think that time is a big enough factor at this point for them to have to be worried about. First and 10. One run on the day, so we can pretty much expect to pass. And the quarterback's going to throw up a dangerous one. Thankfully for him, it just goes out of bounds. His man was open, but the way that he lobbed that up, if it was uh, catchable, there's a chance that we could have gotten to it. Second and 10. We'll try to pressure these guys. Stepping up in the pocket. He makes the throw, and it's to Reed, his favorite target so far today. But five yards, it gives it a third and five. And with George Smith on the field, again, we're going to use room to get some pressure on this QB. 
All that we need is just to cover these guys off for a half a second. And it's not quite enough. Fourth and one. Terrible spot. Trojans got jobbed there. They might have to punt it away, though. We're going to be in the punt return safe zone because, uh, I don't know, I would be going for it at this stage in the game if I was USC. Uh, late in the third quarter, down a whole hell of a lot of points. This is a fair catch. This is with Jody Gentry, but... Uh, I don't know. You give us the football uh, with how good our offense has been. Seems like a mistake to me. Again, just one minute remaining in this third quarter as we will try to look deep. And right bumper. That's a risky throw and it's picked off. I don't know if we were getting hit as we threw or what. That felt like it came out weird. We just gave USC a chance. A breath of life. Uh, I kind of panicked throwing that one. Felt the pressure coming. Made a mistake and we might pay for it. Trying to have Maurice Tate do too much in a situation where we don't need that from him. Just uh, be a game manager at that point, and we are on to the uh, semifinals. Says the quarterback, I just missed him. I continue to miss him. He's off to the races, knocked out of bounds inside the red zone. Jamal Wheeler, not necessarily a quick quarterback, but he's getting it done with his legs when it matters most. If they score a touchdown here, I will be nervous. 47 seconds left in the quarter. Stepping back over the middle. He's got the completion to who else but Reed, and he gets pushed out of bounds after picking up nine. Don't be surprised if they give this one to the running back on this second down. It's going to be a handoff up the middle. London's there to stop him. He got maybe half a yard there, but not much more. On this third and one, I'm watching for the counter. They will hand it off, and we're there to stop him in the backfield for a loss of two. Fourth and three. USC's got to go for it here. What can we do to stop him is the question. And I might be wrong. It's the field goal formation out for USC. They're not going to get the kickoff, though. Letting the clock run down. Maybe a chance to think about this a little bit more as we head into the fourth quarter up 42-14. to 11-2, number nine Trojans not looking so hot right now. I think that we can put them away here. And as I kind of expected, we are going to be seeing them go for it. We're bringing out the pressure. We're trying to bring everything. Royal, the sack for the turnover on downs. Quarterback's got to have better awareness than that in that situation. He's staring him down. Nobody gets open in time for him. We're able to survive. So I've got no reason not to burn the clock down now as we will just run the ball at these guys, force them to stop us and put them in a dangerous time situation. But man, they were ready for it on that play. Don't be surprised if they continue to stop us. I will pass it on a third down if necessary. And it is going to be necessary here as Derek Bentley just runs out towards the sideline and gets tackled for no gain. We know this won't be an easy completion. Even if we go three and out here, we're able to burn a decent amount of clock off, which is, in my eyes, pretty good news. Stepping back, Brian Curtis is who we're looking at. He's kind of open, and Brian Curtis comes down with it. No, he drops it through the contact. Can't hold on. The tight end usually, or the, I guess he's a wide receiver. Usually has solid hands. It's not enough that time though. So we will have to boot this one away. And I don't feel confident. Wind coming at us. Let's see if we can put it down. Could be caught. Bounces past the return. Man, that is huge. Green chasing him down here. And as always, I'm going to miss every opportunity. We gave up probably a free 10 yards for Justin Mitchell there. That's the, the two-week break in effect right there. Just a terrible user in that instance. They're going to step back over the middle. They don't need to go to me because it's Evans out on the out route. Wide open for a gain of 13. We know what to expect on just about every play, but what can we do to actually stop it as this one? I don't know. You can maybe call uh, pass interference on me because I ran into that uh, wide receiver. Threw him just behind the throw, so it's incomplete. And he had a lot of space to work with. There was a lot of... Uh, traffic over the middle of the field on that one. They're going to go with a draw play. Terrible decision. Stop for a, a loss or a, a stop for no gain. Not sure how I couldn't get that word out, but uh, the clock's moving, which is terrible news for these guys. So we expect the pass. Trying to bring some pressure on third and 10. Seeing what we can do over the middle of the field. It's wide open, but they're going to throw a dangerous one out towards the edge. Mike Reed, of course, coming down with it. That's like, his, yeah, it's his 10th catch of the day. I don't want to uh, just sit back and let them pass on us, but I'm definitely worried about the passing ability, and I don't know if we can really stop the run all that well. As that was a great stop on the delayed handoff. See what we can get out of this cover, too. Again, not feeling super confident. Second and 10, hoping that the coverage holds up over the middle of the field. There's Morris, and he's got the first down inside the red zone. 
Well, USC is definitely doing some work here late in the game. I think that we did enough early to stave off whatever attacks they have here. They are going to their slip screen. This has worked all too well so far today for them, but this one being held to a measly four yards. They're going to consider that a failure compared to their other attempts. Second and six, they're down to the 11-yard line. Continuing with this hurry up, we'll try to stop anything over the middle. Not feeling too confident. I got there too late. Morris gets the catch. He's got positive yards to make it a third and two, but again, the clock is moving. So whatever they can do, it's just not enough. 240 left in this game. Kind of expecting a run here, and it's going to be a little play action draw. No, play action throwing Ron Johnson in the area, but it's incomplete fourth and two. And this is where we've got to be ready for it all. Kind of expecting a counter, but I'm not entirely certain what we'll see. And no, it is going to be a handoff. And if again, a turnover on downs inside the 10 for USC. Trojans unable to convert at the doorstep. Disastrous news for them. That's back-to-back -back trips where they have been so close to a touchdown and the defense holds. And now Derek Bentley can just run and run and run, stay in bounds, pick up a bunch of yards. And this clock is going to start to come away real soon. Inside two minutes left to play in this one. We'll expect the Trojans to start taking their timeouts unless they're going to be waving the white flag. Bentley, no gain on that one. Doesn't lose any yards though and again stays in bounds. And with the Trojans not taking any timeouts, we can kind of assume that that means that they have indeed surrendered. We're going to throw a slip screen or maybe not. Uh, a is wide open. <laughs> Give it to Stone, pick up some yards. Uh, that was just me trying to pick up the first down no matter but but with a minute left this one's over props to usc for recognizing that this one's over i couldn't be too mad you know you're playing for your season you're playing for the playoffs um but you know sometimes you got to know when to call it quince's lionel goodwin is not gonna go down what is he doing there the absolute madman somehow got 15 yards out of that play that is going to allow us just to take a knee on this one. Just come out in the victory formation. We're going to do that just for the extra XP. We know how important that tends to be. And that's going to do it for this game. The playoff first round against the number eight seed. One that we should be expected to win. But a 93 overall team. 42 to 14. Absolutely dominated these guys. It's a Red Bull win. Uh, Red Bull. <laughs> I've been watching too much of Formula One. A Rose Bowl win. <laughs> uh, and it's RJ Rivera, who must have had a can of Red Bull before the game. Absolutely zooming off to the races on that opening kickoff. He started strong. He got the game off to the right foot. And uh, team just never looked back. That's enough to get us into the semifinal round. Curious who we're going to play. Uh, I think it was between Georgia Tech and Cincinnati. Gotta say, I'm pretty sure that Georgia Tech is going to get that win. RJ Rivera is our player of the game. 262 all-purpose yards and a bunch of touchdowns as we can lift up the trophy to the granddaddy of them all. Feeling very, very confident uh, that we can at least make it through the next round. If we play like we did today, we should be able to win a national championship. Man, a 21 to nothing first quarter. I don't think the USC could have done anything to come back from that. 14 points in the second, seven in the third, none in the fourth. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad that we didn't start with 14 because then we would have had negative seven in the fourth. Uh, but at the end of the day, a very, very comfortable quarterfinal matchup for us. Uh, 140 rushing yards to their 29. They did outpass us with 255 to our 194. Uh, we won the turnover battle by one. One of our turnovers, though, was just a Hail Mary at the end of the half. So realistically, defense played really well. Maurice had a really, really good game. But it's RJ Rivera again, uh, offensive player of the game. Two touchdowns. Could have been more. Uh, a lot of all-purpose yards. Chris Whitaker, four tackles and a pick. Could have been any number of players that got defensive honors. Uh, I mean, it's as simple as that. We dominated the... Uh, I mean, what else can you say? We dominated. So we have won the Rose Bowl. We can go ahead and add that to the profile. Old-fashioned whipping for him there as, uh, well, let's go ahead and sim the rest of the uh, the quarterfinal matchups. See what we have going forward. Uh, top 25. 
I have to remember who's playing and what, as we know that Georgia and Texas on the other side of the board is going to be a big one. And I didn't see, I think it might be Georgia. Yeah, knocking out the number two seed. I said that that one was going to be close. Georgia played the game or played the season really well. And the Bulldogs, as the, I think the number seven seed, are on to the semifinals. Cincinnati, Georgia Tech on our side of the bracket to see who will be playing in the semifinals. Again, I'm going to guess it's Georgia Tech. And it is Georgia Tech 24 to 13. Relatively close game. Cincinnati just unable to get it done. Uh, big fourth quarter for uh, Georgia Tech to put that one away and get the win. And in the final first round game here in the Cotton Bowl, it's Tennessee and Clemson. No idea who would win this game. Uh, it's Clemson winning it by a point 21 to 20. Uh, Tennessee, the field goals hurt him. Had to settle for few, two field goals. Clemson able to score two touchdowns to take the lead and hold on in the fourth quarter. One to start the fourth quarter. Uh, I don't know how you score with 15 minutes left on the clock, but they're able to do that four yard run. And then pretty late in the game, 539, Tennessee unable to answer back. So it's Clemson on to the semifinal round. Unfortunately, that is going to have to do it for this episode. We will get all the semifinal games loaded up and obviously play through our semifinal matchup against Georgia Tech in the next episode. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Man, it felt good to come out from a long break and actually play well. We had a user pick. That is so rare for me. So very happy that that happens. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to be notified when new videos get posted. After that, you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goodmaster. There's also links to my Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and our community Discord, as well as the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goodmaster. You guys are the gray boys and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios. Special thanks to our Tier 3 members, Durham Finch, Avery Binkley, and Warmaster777.